Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 1 and 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. The title of the message is, Do You Want the Real Preaching? Do You Want the Real Preaching? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Do you want the real preaching? The Bible says, I charge therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? For saving us sinners from the eternal lake of fire with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for eternal security. We thank you for setting up this Bible church where we could gather together to sing praises unto you and to hear some good preaching, Lord God. Amen. We ask you that you open everyone's hearts minds and ears to a word, help us not to be having a wandering mind, Lord God. Help us just fully give ourselves unto you. We ask you that you'll fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We ask you that you'll speak through him. Lord, convict us, rebuke us, and help us change for the better. And for those who are under the weather, please be with them, heal them, help them to recover quickly. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Do you want the real preaching? There are thousands, tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands of churches out there in this world. And the main reason people go to church is to hear preaching. And when we look at verse 2, the Bible says, preach the word. So it's a command, be in standing in season, out of season. So preaching is needed. Preaching is needed for every single person. Preaching is needed for me, and preaching is needed for you. However, many seek you know, wrong preaching. Many seek watered-down you know, apostate preaching. Right. Modern preaching is designed to win friends and influence people. That's the many, many you know, preaching. That's what it's all about. You try to influence people. You try to win as many people. That's why a lot of Bible-believing church that preach the truth, they don't really have many people in their congregation. People can handle real preaching, real preaching that brings reproof, right, in the verse 2. Reproof, rebuke, and exhort. Those three are needed in preaching. But many times, a lot of people only use exhort. You know, if you were to go to any of, you know, modern churches out there, even, you know, fundamentalist churches, so-called, it's all about ex exhortation. It's all about, you know, stirring people to action. But they forget the real reason why preaching is needed. Preaching is needed, why? So that it could reprove your sin. Amen. Man, you and I have sin problems. Until the day of rapture, until you, you know, leave this earth, you're going to face you know, sin problems on a daily basis. That's why you need preaching. I mean, if you want the real preaching, then you must really have the heart to change. If you don't have heart to change, you don't have heart to surrender, you don't have heart to you know, obey the word and sacrifice, then what's going to happen? You don't want the real preaching. You want preaching that only, you know, gives pleasure to your ears. When you go see many of the places where there are thousands, even tens of thousands of people in a congregation, especially these modern, you know, apostate age, it's because they get to hear very, very sharing message, like a coping message. It's because many of you guys throughout the, you know, week, throughout the month, throughout the year, you go through hardships in your life. Now, unless you're born into a 
you know, especially when it comes to financial situation, if, unless you're born into a billionaire's family, millionaire's family, you know, you're going to face some kind of financial hardships. Then, you know, prosperity preaching is perfect for you. It will influence you. Like, okay, you know, God's going to bless you. You give more money to the church. You know, you give more money to this ministry. You increase your, you know, tithing. You know, the Lord's going to triple that. The Lord's going to quadruple that. Tenfold, hundredfold. And people get enticed to it. You know, who doesn't want to be, you know, be blessed by God? Physically, monetarily. And false preachers, false teachers use that to entice people. And maybe you're just a sinner, bad person. You're just, you just commit a lot of sin. You don't want real preaching where all your sins are exposed and you know, rebuked and reproved. No. You want to go to a place where your sins are covered. Right? You know, it's, uh, it's not a great thing when someone from the pulpit says, you know, everybody's doing it, so it's okay. You do it as well. It's inevitable that you're going to do it because everybody else is doing it, right? And they generalize the whole, this concept of sin. That's why it's not a preaching for one's individual mind. Heart is grouping. People start grouping things. It's a social problem, right? It's a social problem that people lie. Social problem that you know people you know commit fornication and adultery all the time. It's a social problem that people you know gamble. You know people do drugs. You know people you know drink alcohol, consume it. It's a social problem that you know people do this wicked stuff. And when you listen to those type of preaching, it never really hits your own heart. If you are sitting here today and if you are listening online, when it comes to preaching, you have to have a heart's attitude that it's all for me. It's me that needs to be changed. It's me that needs to be corrected. It's me that needs to get right with the Lord. It's not someone sitting next to you. It's not someone sitting in front of you, behind you. It's not someone you think about right now who's not here. It's about you. When you don't receive the preaching from the Lord through preachers to yourself, then what's going to happen? It has no effect in your life. You could be sitting here 52 weeks every Sunday, but if you do not receive it as your own, and if you don't understand the purpose of real preaching, then what's going to happen? You will be the same, or you'll get worse. How many of you guys here sitting here and listening feel like you haven't really changed? You haven't really changed for the better, spiritually speaking, for, I don't know, pick a, pick a time frame for this year, past year and a half, or even during pandemic. Because God uses preachers, Bible-believing preachers in local churches, and they're preaching every week, week after week, week after week. And if they're preaching out of the perfect word of God, right, if they're preaching you know, without the wrong doctrine, right. and if they're preaching against sin, then if you had the right heart, you should be changed in some way. However, for the majority of the Christians, that's not the case. For the majority of the Christians, you're not spiritually at a better state than before. You're actually about the same or you're declining constantly. You're constantly declining. When you should be closer to the Lord, you're not closer to the Lord. When you should be praying more, you're praying less. When you should be witnessing more, you're witnessing less. When you should be doing something for God at any moment. You're doing less and less and less. And everything becomes like robotic. Everything becomes just part of a daily routine where, you know, you do it, it's good. You don't do it, it's okay. That's how people receive preaching. 
okay, if it doesn't affect me, oh well, maybe I'll get affected next week. If it doesn't hit my heart, oh well, it may hit next week. And it goes on and on and on. That's why there's no true change in your life. That's why many Christians just struggle with same sin over and over and over. I guarantee you, if you want to be right with the Lord, even if you're not, God wants you to be right with Him, then you hear some strong preaching in your life. And especially recently, if you're struggling with certain sin in your life, Lord will preach against that sin, whether it's through the Word of God, whether it's through, you know, preaching. However, you just ignore it. However, you don't think it's a big deal. However, you get convicted just a tiny bit, but you never put it into action. I mean, that's the typical, typical Christian in this Laodicean apostate stage. You tend to know what's right. You know what's right, but you never do it. Why? Because you're all about coping and sharing. You love to share. You love to share your concerns. You love to share your sin issues with others. However, it's all about sharing and coping, and you stop there. You never decide in your heart truly to get right with the Lord. That's why many of you guys, for 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, you know, which says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's just a few words that you hear here and there. Because you never meditate on that verse, you don't memorize it, and you don't apply it in your life. If you were to hear real preaching, and if you hear preaching that pricks your heart, and the Holy Spirit is convicting you, then you would have to apply it. How many of you usually, or on a regular cases, apply the preachings that you heard or you hear? Because being in the ministry you know, for a long time, including myself, looking at myself, you know, it's very, how should I say, if you hear 10 preachings, maybe you will take action, maybe one or less. I mean, that's the percentage. If everybody took action more than half of the time, then your Christian walk will be really close to the Lord. I mean, if you hear about, say if you hear about, you know, convicting preaching about your sin 10 straight times, you should have changed first or second or third time, right? But even after 10th time, if you're still doing that sin, if you're still doing it, then what does that tell you? Your heart wasn't really into changing in the first place. If you really wanted to change, you would change. Think about it. If you guys were to go to work, but you're constantly coming in late to work. Work starts at 8. But you're always coming in at 8, 10, 8, 15. And your boss goes, okay. Okay, Jimmy. If you come in late one more time, you're fired. Majority of the people who need to make a living will start changing their habits and change their life and start coming before 8 o'clock. Yeah, because they got to make a living. But there's always those few out there who still come late and get fired and look for a different job. But that's, you know, that's majority will follow and then some won't. But in Christian walk, it's totally opposite. Yeah. I mean, the Lord's telling you through preaching, right? Okay, stop sinning, you know? Don't do it anymore. Because the Bible clearly says you reap what you sow. So you're going to be punished, right? I mean, outside world, in working world, you'll be fired. But in the spiritual world, you know, you're going to get punished, man. You're going to be chastified, chastised, chastised by God. And then you know it, right? And God has given you clear understanding that if I continue to do this, you know, it's not like I'm going to get fired, but I'm going to be punished. 
And if you truly care about the real preaching, then you're going to make some changes in your life. But however, how many of you really change? Right? How many of you really, really change? That's the question. I mean, how many of you really change after real preaching? Because days are evil. You know, back in the days, even in 1950s, you know, when they had tent meetings, people would actually, after many of the preachings, would just come out to the altar and they start bawling. I mean, you see this real man, as they say, cry. I mean, you'll see a lot of real men crying because they're so convicted. They're so, you know, convicted under Holy Spirit that those preachings hit them so hard that they have to get right with the Lord. They have to change. You know, that's why a lot of saloons, you know, a lot of those bars would just close down. Whenever those, you know, tent meetings, you know, revival meetings pass by. Because people really desire real preaching. And people, when they hear that real preaching, you know, when it's, you know, preaching against their sin, they change. Amen. But nowadays, what's going on? You call so-called bunch of revival meetings out there. What happens? You go, you know, go to Angel Stadium, Dodger Stadium. You listen to some, you know, contemporary Christian music. You know, you feel a little good. You feel a little bit better. You know, not understanding that you're a sinner on your way to hell. Just repeat after a prayer. And you think you're all good. And then same pattern happens again. So a year later, you're no better. You're still the same, you know, backslidden, wicked Christian. What is the purpose in your life? As they say, Right? This crook wrote, what, well, a purpose-driven life, right? But what is real purpose in your life? I mean, you ask yourself as a Christian. I mean, if God has given me this perfect word of God, Amen. which many people don't have or are not even aware of or are deceived or just reject completely, but if you have it, and then if you have the right local Bible-believing church to go to, and the preaching to go with it, then what are you doing about it? It's about time that you change. It's about time that you get right with the Lord. It's about time that you surrender everything to the Lord as a Christian. You know, when people hear preaching, they'll surrender certain parts of their life. They don't surrender all. That's a problem. You're willing to give up, say, drinking. Because you, you don't really drink anyways, right? You're willing to give up smoking cigarettes because you don't really smoke, right? It's bad breath. You're willing to give up drugs, right? Because you don't think it's good anyways. But when it comes to things like relationship and money, then, man, you start wavering, right? You can't give up that friend because you've known that friend forever, like best friend. So I'm going to be unequally yoked together with that person. I mean, Bible clearly says be not unequally yoked together right. with unbelievers. But you're like, ah, oh, Lord, you know, and my ultimate goal is to witness to that person and lead that person to the Lord. But how long is it going to take in the first place? Will you even ever do it? Right. Many times you don't. You do the same thing, same sin. You know, that's why you know, sanctification, separation is very important. And if you were to listen to that type of preaching, I guarantee if you're saved, you're going to have that you know, uneasy feeling, that burdensome feeling inside of you. you know, I've got to end this relationship because it's no good, because it's against the word of God. All right? I mean, however tough it is, you know, the Lord's going to help you carry that burden. So there's no impossible things with God. Right. But it's just that boom. You're like, nah, 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 nah. And uh, Lord, that part of my life, I can't give it up. You know, I just can't. Then what happens? And a lot of times those are the folks, you know, who start distancing themselves from the Bible believers. Those are the people who start distancing themselves 
from doing the will of God. And those are the people who start distancing themselves completely from the word of God, and they just disappear. And you don't want to be that person, because at the end of the day, who are you going to blame? Are you going to blame that unbeliever? No, you got to own it up, and you have to anyways, that because it's your fault, because that, because Lord gave you warning through preaching, through the word of God. Don't do it, but you still do it. Isn't it funny that, you know, as a human being, you know it's wrong, but you still do it. I mean, that's the nature of you and I. You know, we have that old nature. You and I know that we shouldn't do it, but we still do it. That tells you how wicked you are. I mean, that tells you how weak you are. I mean, that tells you how disobedient you are. Then you have to realize it. And without the strong, real preaching, and without the attitude to listen to the real preaching, then what happens? You'll never, ever change. You're just going to be that saved Christian who never does anything for the Lord. I mean, you're here in a local Bible-believing church, going to street preaching, right, participating in ministry. That's good. You know, don't get me wrong. However, outside of that, you don't do anything, literally. I mean, you're, you're literally doing only, you're like a great Christian, only inside the church, but outside of church in your personal life, you don't do anything for the Lord. I mean, that's a shame, right? You know, what the Lord has done for you, he didn't die for you just so that you only obey him. You know, have a relationship, close relationship with the Lord during church hours. You know. But outside of church hours, the uh, majority of the Christians don't care about the preaching. Right? Like today, you listen to the preaching, you get convicted, you discuss it amongst each other, and you say how good it is, right? Because the Lord has given you grace to you know, listen to good preaching, you know, hit your heart. But once you go home, there's no change. You go to TV, turn that TV on. You go to your phone, you know, start playing with your phone. And whatever hobbies that you might have, right? I'm not saying you shouldn't have it, but that shouldn't be your priority. That shouldn't be your number one. Then do you really want the real preaching? That's the real question. Don't say that I want it unless... Your heart wants it. Because you and I, through our just brains, we know many, many, many things. That's why many people don't get saved. They know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. They know he is Lord. They know he is the Savior. They know it, but they don't believe it. You and I know what Bible preaches against us. And we know that's right. Amen. And whatever you hear from preachers in a Bible-believing church, you know it's for each individual. Yes. It's just that, is your heart really open? Is your heart really ready to obey? Is your heart really ready to follow? Is your heart really ready to surrender? I think surrender is one of the hardest things for any person to do. True. That's why, you know, Bible actually has a hierarchy, right? You know, there's God the Father, there's God the Son, right? Especially in a household, there's the father, there's mother, and there's children. Right. Why would Bible say, you know, wife, submit yourself to husband? Because it's hard. Yes. I mean, Amen. can you imagine you, you are living as a two different people right. in a society where they tell you that everybody's equal all yeah. the time, right. right? I mean, even though we have different roles, uh, I mean, even the definition of feminism has, you know, changed so much, yes. right? Men and women are different. It's Very just, that's the, that's the thing. Everybody's different. So yes. each person has a different role. You know, I'm not going to dive too much into it. It's for you know, outside of preaching discussion, then, then if you know that everybody's a different, if God tells you that, you know, as a woman, you submit yourself to husband, 
you just do it. Yeah. It's just that if you have so much pride, if you have so much you know, in, inside of you where you think you're the best, you think you deserve more, then what happens? You're going to ignore God's command. I mean, children, obey your parents. This is right. Yes. I mean, it's right. Yeah. For you're like, you know, my mom and my dad, you know, they're not the smartest folks out there. And you start looking down on your parents. So, oh, they don't make enough money, you know. You know, like over there, you know, Jane and Jimmy, you know, their parents, you know, make a lot of money. And they get, you know, good cars, right? They live in good houses, wow. good brand stuff. You know, my parents, you know, they try their best. You know what? You know, I appreciate it. But, man, you look down on your parents. Really? You're not submitting yourself to your own parents. See, all those are culmination of you not really wanting real preaching. Because real preaching just comes out of, straight out of the Word of God Amen. and just telling you as it is. Yes. And if you are not willing to accept it, if, you're not, if you don't even have mind to put it in your heart to apply it in your life, then you'll never change. Right. I mean, that's the whole conclusion even of this preaching is that if you don't want the real preaching, then you'll never change. That's right. I mean, simple as that. Yes. Wherever you are right now, you will just stay or you just go straight down and down and you'll backslide more and more and more. Then let's go back to chapter 4, verse 2, 2 Timothy. And the Bible says, Preach the word, be in standing season, out of season, reprove. So real preaching, number one, reprove sinners. So it's number one. Real preaching reproves sinners for their sins. And then reprove means convincing someone of something that is wrong. So a sin, for example, right? If you are if you're fornicating, the Bible says it's wrong. Yes. Then you name it. You name that sin. You don't generalize it like a lot of people. Oh, there's some, you know, you know, wrong sins going on. So, on the, so don't do it, people. Right. I mean, people are like, what? Okay. So I'm just not going to do it. But real preaching reproves sinners like you and I yes. for your sins. And he names the sins, right? Amen. And tells the consequences of sin. It, does, it doesn't stop there. You know, if you are going to continue to sin, if you're going to fornicate, there's going to be consequences, right? If you're going to continue to disobey your parents, there's going to be consequences. Yes. If you're going to disobey God, there are going to be consequences. Yes. You know, if you neglect the word of God, you know, if you don't preach like the Bible says to preach, right? And if you're unholy, what does the Bible say? There's going to be consequences. You reap what you sow. So real preaching reproves. I mean, have you been at places where, or even you turn on TV or go through YouTube? I mean, how many people actually preach against sin? Literally, you know, names, name the sin and tell you the consequences of it. A lot of times people hear about the sin, but they don't hear the consequence. That's why they think it's okay to go on with their sin. But real sin is judgmental. Right. I'm sorry. I mean, that's, that's what the Bible is, right? Sure. God is a judge. And God's going to judge you and me at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. God's going to judge unsafe sinners, right, at the white throne judgment. Right. Yes. I mean, God's going to judge for your sins. Yes. Whether, you know, whatever happens, right, after you got saved, even before you reap what you sow, but ask everything that after you got saved, whether it be good or bad, you know, knowing the terror of the Lord, you're going to be judged. Good judged day. for every single sin. Then when you hear real preaching, man, that's really hitting my heart because it reproves of my sin. He names my sin and he tells me of the consequences. I mean, consequences can be varied, right? You could lose your health, right? You could lose, you know, whatever, possessions. But spiritually speaking, you're going to lose that close relationship with the Lord. You're going to be far away from the Lord. And you're going to be burdened. There's no peace. It's as if, you know, your life means nothing to you. You live each day like robots, that's terrible. 
There's no real purpose, right? There's no real meaning in your life. Why? Because you're not doing anything about your sin. So reprove means what? So it's convincing you of something that's wrong. Let's go to chapter 2 again. So after reprove, then there's rebuke. Rebuke is much stronger statement. Rebuke, you know, when preaching rebukes, it means that it rebukes sinner for their sins and it puts the sinner down in plain, plain language. You got to get the message. That's why people love rebuking preaching. Why? It just tells you you're wrong. There's no, you know, you know, indirect comment. There's no going around the bushes. You know, rebuking preaching says, you're wrong. Don't do it again. Amen. Amen. You're fornicating, so you, you're wrong. So don't do it again. Amen. You're stealing, you're wrong. Don't do it again. Right? You're Amen. abusing the temple of God, your body. Right. You're wrong. Don't do it. Yes. I mean, rebuking is so clear cut. It's simple. You're in a false doctrine, get out of it. You're wrong, Amen. right? Amen. Simple as that. I mean, that's why people who get messed up in the wrong doctrine, Lord gives them rebuking preaching because a lot of people just go through so many of the YouTube because there's so many things out there where people just take a verse out of context and then just run with it, right? Yeah. That's where cults are formed. Not looking at everything in a context. And you're saved. You have the zeal to learn the word of God. But you think that this verse, I think I know better than anybody else. I feel like, you know, God is giving me more wisdom to know about this verse. And you're like, you start acting like, you know, you know more than Dr. Ruckman, you know more than Dr. Jin Kim, you know, Pastor Kim, you know. It's like you're like, wow, I, I know more than anybody else, right? But then God hits you and shows you, you know, from teachings and the word of God and the, from preaching that you've been a fool. You're taught wrong. You had the wrong desire. Your knowledge puffed up. Right. So whatever you thought you, it was right, you are in the wrong doctrine. You're following the wrong person. Then preaching goes, you're wrong. Don't do it. You blew it but you couldn't get it. You could get right. Amen. So stop it. Then when you hear that kind of preaching, right? if you want the real preaching, when the preacher says, don't do it, stop it, get out of it, no more, then choices made for you very, very easy. Either you stop, don't do it, or you disobey, and you continue to do it. That's why rebuking preaching, you don't see it many times. Think about it. I mean, like in a Bible-believing setting, I mean, can you think that you could have fellowship with other brethren when all you do is, you know, just gossip them about them, be a tail bear, right? Tattletales, you know, always talking bad about other people. You know, and when you hear this rebuking preaching, don't do it, right? You're being used by the devil. You're trying to split the church in half. And if you do want the real preaching, that's going to prick you in your heart and you're going to change. But if you don't want it, what happens? You continue to do it, but God's going to judge you for it. The sad part is that you're going to bring some other people down with it who doesn't want the real preaching either then you do have to avoid people, you know. I mean, the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil, and your brethren could be evil too. Yeah. Don't get me. <laughs> Don't get it wrong. I mean, you're all saved, right, if you trust that Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, but you can still be the wickedest devil out in the world. Amen. Which Amen. means, Preach. as a brother and sister in Christ, you do not want to be associated with people who doesn't want real preaching. If you don't want real preaching, then what do you want? You want that sharing and coping preaching. 
you know, brother, it's okay. You know, sometimes emotion gets out of control. You know, you could talk bad about other people and spread it to every single person in the church that you know of, right? You know, without any consequences, right? It's okay, you know. I, you know, emotions get hard. You know, you could talk, you know, behind the pastors and pastors' wives' back, right? You know, nobody, nobody's perfect, right? But you feel like there's no consequence, and then you deal with and associate with those people, then God will judge you for it. And you don't, don't ever say that I want a real preaching when you're that type of person, that type of Christian. So real preaching reproves sinners, real preaching rebukes sinners. And finally, in a verse 2, reprove, rebuke, exhort. So real preaching exhorts the sinners. Exhortation, exhort means to stir up to action. So real preaching, you know, will stir up. It's like a motivation for you to do something. Which means... Real preaching will make you or move you about your sins and sinful condition and do something about it. Amen. So you've been reproved. You know, I mean, since I use this example, so you've been reproved about your fornication. You've been rebuked about your fornication. Now, now it's your exhortation time. This exhortation is what? Time for you to put into action. Yes. That's right. Then you have to do something about your sin and sinful condition. Then simple as that. Don't do it anymore. Amen. You know, turn away from it. Whatever it is. You know, I mean, if you are lazy, you know, if you're just a lazy person where you don't read your Bible and you don't pray, now you've been preached that, right? Your laziness is a sin. You keep on living a lazy Christian life, you got to be judged for it. Yes. Yes. It's wrong, don't do it. Amen. Now it's time for you to take action. So I'm a lazy Christian. I know my sinful condition. I heard reprove, rebuke now, exhortation, exhort, then I have to change. That's where a lot of people stop. Man, they listen to reprove, they listen to rebuke. They're convicted. You know, they really want to get right with the Lord. The last part, exhortation, exhort, that's where people just stop. You're like almost 85, 90% there because moving hard is the hardest and your heart has moved. But devil's not going to stop. Devil's going to continue to walk. Right. And I mean, work and devil's going to be like, okay, it's all good. I'm glad you're convicted. I'm glad, you know, your heart's trying to get right with the Lord. That's good enough, you know. I mean, that's a good day's work, okay? So putting it into action, trying to do something about it, just wait. Wait until next preaching. Wait until, you know, next, next preaching. So just, just, just hold on, hold on. You know, with God, many times, it's, if it's right, just do it. There's no waiting time yes. when it comes to doing right stuff and when it comes to getting right with the Lord. If the Lord has preached to you and preached you in your heart, Holy Spirit has moved you to take action, then you have to take action. Amen. Right? Yes. I mean, for example, you know, if you, are, if you have a lot of, you know, say, dirty stuff, dirty music, dirty videos, right, in your collection. Right. And it's been so hard for you to throw them away because of all the time and years that you invested in those things. But you hear the preaching, yeah. you know, keep thyself pure. Yes. Just that one simple verse, Amen. you know, flee you full lust. Yes. And they're like, okay, man, what I've been done, doing is wrong. You know, I was named of my sin, my condition. Now it's time for me to do something about it. Yes. If you want the real preaching and if you want to apply it in your life, you get those videos, music, and you'll trash it. Easy. Yeah. I mean, the book of Acts, you know, people burn those things, yes. right? Yes. Then it's up to you. Uh, what good is it if you continue to have it? Right. Well, is it for what? You want to show it to some people? 
or you want to go to it when you're really down, yeah, don't, don't use sin as your escaping source. Amen. Right? A lot of people, when things go wrong, they go back to sin. True. And they blame God for it. Right. Isn't it funny how, like, you know, it's you are the problem, you are the sinner, you're in that sinful condition, and somehow because of your actions, something goes wrong. Good it's never you. God's fault. Yeah. But you go back to God and say, God, you put me in this situation. You know, all those real preaching, you know, I wanted it. I tried to apply it, but you never helped me for it. It's like, it's, 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 it's almost farce. Like, you are the problem. You're the one who needs to get right. But you're the one who's like blaming God for all your issues. And then what happens? You know, when something goes wrong, and then you go back to the old ways, you go back to those sins, and you're like, God, you, you made me do it. You know, I really did not want to do drugs. But I had relationship problems. I had work problems. I have school problems. And then how am I going to make myself feel better, Lord? So I'm just going to do drugs. I'm going to just smoke some joints or, you know, snip some stuff. And then you blame God for it. See? You already knew from reproving and rebuking preaching that that's not the way to go. But instead of, you know, putting it into action, doing something about it, you go the other way, and then you blame God for it. So many of you guys might be in that situation in your life where you know everything. You know it's wrong. But you want to find that comfort. You want to find that peace or pleasure or way out. And then you go back to that sin. And then you blame God for it. But sooner or later, you're going to realize that, man, if you are saved, if you really want to get right with the Lord, how foolish you've been. how, How really, really, really foolish you've been because you are using worldly mental way of thinking to do the wrong, to justify it as a right thing to do, and then you blame God for it. You know, there's no reason for you to God to give you a million bucks. There's no reason for God to give you good health. It's all privilege. I mean, if you're not thankful for it, if you're abusing it, and if you try to find reasons to, you know, commit sin and blame God for it, then you're going to reap what you sow. Yes. God, as a loving father, has to chastise you for it. Amen. He wants to get you right. Because the Bible says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die in the book of Romans. And if you continue to live in that state, continue to blame God for it, continue to blame the situation for it, then what's going to happen? You know, you're going to live in sin, you're going to die. So there's, that's a one and a way to do it. You know, if you want to die early, you know, live after the flesh. Yes. You die. But you got, what does that mean then? What's your life legacy? Right? Did you die as someone who lived for Christ or did you die as, as someone who lived for your own self Shame. and done nothing for the Lord? Right. That's why if you want the real preaching, you know, you're not going to just stop at reprove, rebuke. You're going to exhort. Uh, you're going to use that in your life. Amen. You're going to do something about your sins and sinful condition. Yes. You're going to get right with the Lord. You're going to apply 1 John 1, 9 in your life, and you really will change your heart for the better. Spiritually speaking, that you're going to start growing. Amen. No more backsliding continuously. You're going to turn away from that sin, Woo! which you've been doing for Since you got saved, even after you got saved, you know, before you got saved. But it all comes down to one thing. It's up to you and your heart. Do you want to surrender to the Lord? Do you want to serve the Lord? You know, do you want to sacrifice for the Lord, right? Do you want to really give up everything for the Lord? If you don't want to give up everything for the Lord then real preaching does not apply to you. But if you're willing to give up everything, surrender all your heart to the Lord, 
then this real preaching will change your life every single week. Every time you hear it, man, that reproof, I need it. That rebuke, yes. I need it. Man, that exhort, I need it. Because I'm such a sinner in a sinful condition, whether it be small or big, and I need that preaching so that I could be cleansed over and over. And I'll finish with this. It's like taking you know, a shower, right? It's like washing yourself on a daily basis, yes. right? You get dirty, right? After you get dirty, what do you do? You wash up and you're clean. As Christians, it's a daily practice because you and I are not perfect. We're going to continue to sin. Then we have to wash on a daily basis. And this preaching, real preaching, will help you and I wash on a daily basis. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, many times we take real preaching for granted or we don't even want the real preaching. But you have given us this preaching for reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Help us to identify and really see our sin and sinful condition and the consequences. And you have given us this plain judgment of doing it wrong, have consequences. Help us to just stop doing it, turn away from it, and help us to put it into action, Lord. I certainly am, you know, stirred up to do something about it, Lord. I pray that everybody else, Lord, will be stirred up and do something about their sins and sinful conditions, Lord, so that we'll be closer to you, we'll, be actually, we'll actually have a joyful Christian life and have peace instead of living a, you know, burdens, I mean, just downtrodden Christian life, unjoyful, unhappy, always blaming you or trying to blame situation, Lord God. I pray that you'll be with everyone here and who's listening. Bless them with everything that they need, Lord God, and any struggles that they're going through, the obstacles, Lord God. I pray that they'll find strength in you, Lord. And please heal everybody, Lord God. There are some you know, things going on or going around, Lord. Please heal everyone as soon as possible according to your will. And number one, Lord, you know, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Amen.